So, Dan. So, yes. We have uh, made a bit of a faux pas. Uh-oh. We, uh, as pointed out in the comments by this week's episode, which is not actually this week's episode for everyone else. It's okay. a few weeks ago episode. Um, <laughs> we we talked about Jack the Carjacking Car. It was not mm-hmm. our first episode about Jack the Carjacking Car, I believe. But we but referred to we it. We referred to it. Yes. And someone in the comments, a sagacious person who mm-hmm. knows, their, uh, knows their stuff, points out that if we wanted a food heist in F. Ast Urius, Mm-hmm. Uh, carjacked. Yes, which is obviously the best title. The rolls best off title. the tongue. So easy to the say. Easiest to say F- and remember. Urius and right. Yes. Um, that it, if we were going to have one, uh, the commenter pointed out the food I should be the opening cold open, which is pretty obviously true. Mm-hmm. Uh, good point. But very astute commenter said, "Well, Jack the carjacking car should be stealing an experimental fuel." And then because from his perspective, that's it's a, a food, food heist. heist. There exactly. we go. So okay. smart on you. You are right. Our opening cold open should be Jack the Carjacking Car stealing experimental, experimental fuel, fuel. Because it is a food Very heist. Very good. I love it. Now, you wanted to uh, perhaps rant shortly. I feel like it's not heist. a rant so much mm-hmm. as I feel like we need to educate somewhat mm-hmm. uh, our listeners. Uh, because I get emails all the time from people saying, hey, here's a food heist. Mm -hmm. And most of them, to their credit, they know that it's not an actual food heist. Uh, As an example, somebody this week sent me one and said, this is more of a food felony. And then it was a story of a guy beating up a market clerk with a frozen fish. (laughs) (laughs) Which is very funny. (laughs) That is objectively amusing. Not not that... We yeah. advocate not that for we advocate violence please against anyone. Don't attack anyone, especially not a store clerk, because they put up with yeah. a lot of crap. Um, but like it, it's it's an objectively funny scenario that shows up in a sitcom. You would laugh at it. Yes, um, it's not a heist. It I, is not even really a theft. I think it's worth mentioning though. When we have no food heist, like you're you, you want to <laughs> say, look, send me only food heist. Meanwhile, I'm like, I'm glad I heard the story of someone. Someone I'm, beating up someone with a frozen fish. Yes. Yeah. So, like, if, if we want to expand the purview of our food-related crimes, mm-hmm. and we're as guilty of this as the yes. audience is, right? We've done food. Uh, embezzlement. Embezzlement. Yes. And we have done food cons. We have done other forms of food crimes. Yes. Uh, we have done people committing theft that is adjacent to food. Yeah. Uh, but it, it does feel like maybe uh, the wheels are coming off the wagon a little okay. bit. Okay. So this might be a, a reason why you might ta- not talk about something people send in. Yes. Yeah. So if if you send me a story mm-hmm. uh, that is a food crime and then you don't hear about it on the show, it is not because we do not find it hilarious. Uh, it is because we have journalistic standards. <laughs> I was trying to say that without <laughs> laughing. <laughs> we want to bring you the finest food heists, mm-hmm. lovingly curated and presented to you uh, in their heistiest form. And uh, there are some absolutely wonderful food crime stories that sometimes don't fit. Yes. Yeah. So there, there's your response, dear yeah. viewers and listeners. Um, but I'm glad you shared this one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, before we get to our main topic, though, okay, you know what food reminds me of? What does food remind you of? It reminds me of Hugh Jackman's underappreciated romantic comedy, Kate and Leopold, from 2001. Kate and Leopold. Did you see it? Uh, I only know one line from Kate and Leopold. Oh, yes? Which is, this great erection, because Alan used to quote it all the time in writing group. Um, all right. Um, <laughs> That's all I know about it. So Kate and Leopold is a fanciful tale okay. about time travel and a uh, man from the 1800s, the inventor of the elevator, which okay. is not actually authentically true, just, you know, mm. as if you were a, a lord who you're, is- You're saying that the part that's not true, this is not the man who actually invented the elevator? This is not the, the man elevator. who actually invented the elevator. The part that is true is that- he did come forward in time. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. They 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 fictionalized They're a like, few things. His time travel is not in itself interesting enough. 
Yeah. We're also going to make him the inventor of the elevator. Yes. Comes okay. forward in time. He's yeah. a lord. Um, and uh, I believe it's Meg Ryan and him uh, have a romantic uh, entanglement of various sorts, uh, which is quite amusing. And he's very charming in it. Oh. And it's food related because she is an ad executive okay. looking for a sponsor for her margarine company. Not a sponsor, but a spokesperson. A spokesperson for the margarine and company. And they're through the, the whole sh movie, they're trying different ad campaigns, and none of mm -hmm. them are working. But then he comes in, who's this guy who's time traveled that she's, yeah. you know, engaging in hijinks with, as one might imagine in a mm -hmm. romantic comedy about a time traveling okay. lord. Don't don't tell me. I'm going to yeah. guess. Go ahead. He comes into the scene where they're like auditioning mm -hmm. yeah. different ad campaigns and he tries margarine for the first time his entire life, goes bananas over it. And they're like, that's our guy. So you've got kind of it, right? Is, is that it? it? It's both right and horribly wrong at the same time. <laughs> okay. So she's trying and then like a light bulb goes on when he's speaking and he's so charming and refined. Okay. And she's like, him, the margarine lord. They bring him on and have him read the lines. And he's so, he's Hugh Jackman. Yeah. He is one of the most charming he's people in, in existence. He's unbelievably charismatic. Yes. And so they're like, this is our person to talk about our, our margarine. And they do the whole ad things and everyone's loving it. Mm -hmm. And then in one of them, he has to take a bite of margarine. And he's like, takes it. He says the line about how delicious and like butter it is. He takes it and then he spits it out. And he said, what is this awful stuff? This is not butter. Uh, this is terrible. Okay. Uh, it's actually quite amusing. But um, All right. Yeah. So I was close, but I was also yeah. wildly wrong. Wildly wrong. I can't believe you haven't seen Kate and Leopold. I haven't seen Kate. We, we need to see Kate. Yes. If only one of us owned a home theater. If only one of us owned a... And, expensive, extravagant, uh, so, embarrassingly so large home theater. He doesn't, like, neither he nor anybody else in the story steals margarine. Nope. No. So it's not... It's not a high stage. said the food reminded me. Well, okay. Yeah. But it is a nice, like, example of a delightful story that's unrelated to yeah. a heist. Yeah. So... And unrelated to our main topic today, which is this table. Mm -hmm. um, but before we get to the table... Do you like butter or margarine? You acted like, like I think margarine's kind of gross. And you acted like he was going to love it. Well, I assumed he was going to love it yeah. uh, because it is so different. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, real butter, mm -hmm. I think, is is fantastic. My problem is I'm lactose intolerant, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't really... So do you yeah. use margarine then? I guess that's, you know... I just don't. No. I cook everything with, like... Olive, olive oil, oil or avocado oil or something. Okay. Uh, a friend of mine was scandalized to learn mm. that I don't cook eggs with butter. Mm. I cook eggs with oil. You know, I also cook eggs with oil. Really? Yeah. Because well, that's why my, my mom did it. Just a little light oiling on the pan. So, so many of our stick. listeners right now mm -hmm. are horrified. Yeah. I, I bet. I bet. Um, so, oh, I had a thread. You had a thread? I had a thread. Well, yeah, I was just going to point out that uh, I think lactose intolerance doesn't get uh, the the cachet culturally that it deserves because mm -hmm. really it's like a cool mutation that we have. The, we're lactose right? intolerant. I thought the cool mutation was that we could eat lactose. Well, yeah, I, I, I misspoke. So because it's I'm like a, a cool a tiny, it's like twenty percent or less of mm -hmm. the human species can metabolize lactose correctly. Okay, which feels like a mutation, right? I mean, it would have to be. That's how these That's things work. That's how these things work. Yeah. Uh, and I don't actually know if uh, at, at some point in evolutionary history, mm -hmm. somebody got the weird mutant version of the lactose processing gene where they mm -hmm. could actually do it without getting sick. And uh, I just find that really interesting. So when I was in Europe uh, one time in Spain, we did a food tour which is a really cool thing that I would recommend to people. You just go to a city. They, they have them in some of the big cities. They take you to a lot of different restaurants to try mm -hmm. just a little bit of local cuisine. That's awesome. It was great. I um, did that in Jamaica. Did you? Yeah, it was um, great. So they had us drink vials of olive oil. They went to the olive oil place. And apparently over there, maybe you Spaniards can back me up on this. Like, oh, yes. Hmm, we'll, you know. And they were like, and to me, it's just grease. Like I can't, like I love cooking with olive oil. It tastes good on things, yeah. but it's like, I, I, I drank it and they're like, can't you tell how great this olive oil is? And I'm like, 
I think if I cook something with it, I'd be able to tell that it is really good olive oil. Yeah. But I don't doubt for a oil. second that olive oil is the kind of thing that mm-hmm. there is recognizable quality to. Oh, yes. If you are a connoisseur mm-hmm. of it, right? You yeah. Eat enough olive oil, take enough shots of olive oil. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. do you know what else was set in Europe? What was set in Europe? Hugh Jackman's 2004 schlock classic, Van Helsing. Van Helsing. Yes. Van Helsing stands proudly mm-hmm. as having my favorite zipline scene in all of cinema <laughs> history. <laughs> Tell me about the zipline scene. I do well, remember it. It's but... great. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is on a tower. Yes. Uh, Van Helsing, I don't remember. It's been years. We watched yes. it together. We saw like it together. 15 something years Yeah, we years went ago. like with the crew after like, yeah. yeah writing group um, and, I, and it's like a movie that is just filled to the brim with improbably high towers yes. that are improbably distant from everything else. Yes, and improbable costumes and improbable weapons. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I don't remember the exact circumstances, but he is like on one castle or mountain peak Mm -hmm. and he needs to get to a different one. And so he, does he shoot a cable? Yeah. Or does he just jump onto a, there's either a cable already there Mm -hmm. or he shoots one. Yeah. uh, And then rides on it like Batman style. Because he's very much, Van Helsing is like Victorian Batman. Victorian Batman. Um. But there is absolutely nothing in the movie that could plausibly be anchoring either end of the zip line. Uh, and it's just, it is connected directly to whatever the music is coming from, right? Like <laughs> yes. it's, mm-hmm. there, there's, it's there because it needs to be there. Mm-hmm. And I love that in movies. Yeah. You know, people, um, by the way, Hugh Jackman is great in the movie. He is. It is total He's schlock. great in everything. He is. Uh, it's it's absolute schlock. It's, it's an absolutely terrible movie that I absolutely love. Um, but it's interesting to me that so many people read Dracula. Mm-hmm. And what they decide is Van Helsing is boring. Let's make him awesome. <laughs> like how many incarnations are, you know, Van Helsing the vampire hunter? Because the idea of, of a vampire hunter is very interesting, mm-hmm. right? It's very modern action movie. It's very engaging. But in the book, Van Helsing's kind of a fiddly old man. Uh, yeah, who, who's you know. just kind of there. Yeah. And, and he doesn't do much. And you hunt a vampire by, you know, finding it asleep at night and pounding a stake in its chest while it can't kill you, which is really smart, right? But it's not like... He is great vampire hunter, uh, mm-hmm. Hugh Jackman in a really improbable outfit um, that looks very cool. It's like if the Matrix and Dracula had babies, that's what he's going to wear, right? <laughs> well, and I I suspect, I don't mm-hmm. know this, but I strongly suspect that his costume in that movie is directly inspired by the Warhammer fantasy witch hunters. Oh, yeah, like yeah, the, the that's right. Like the tall pilgrim hat and everything about it. Or I guess maybe they were both inspired by the same historical Here, the thing. something or other. That's got to be a comic, right? Van Helsing that they're basing that movie off of? I, I don't remember if that was a comic yeah. adaptation or not. Adam. I, I'm 100%. Yeah, I'm 100%. Okay. I remember a comic really? Van Helsing, and maybe I'm remembering wrong, but I have this gut instinct that's telling me that costume which totally could be inspired by the same by but Mm -hmm. i bet if we don't acknowledge it there's a decent chance our 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 astute commenters will point out that indeed this is a famous that's the best way to learn something on the internet right is Mm -hmm. to confidently say something that is wrong Mm. so if we say that that uh, costume yeah was uh, designed by um a warhammer fantasy artist who they didn't pay and therefore didn't credit, and it turned into a big legal battle, uh, then it, someone's going to step into the comments and correct us. Yeah, we tell also, us the actual that also could story. be libel since we are doing it <laughs> intentionally. So we wouldn't ever say that. No, we wouldn't. I'm just, I mean, that's no. an example of the kind of yeah. thing we could say if we were more libelous people. Um, I have two things that I want to okay. bring up relating to, mm-hmm. to uh, Hugh Jackman's Van Helsing movie. Mm-hmm. First of all, did you see... Uh, Netflix's Dracula series. I did not see Netflix's Dracula. Uh, yeah, I want to say it's Stephen Moffat. It's the guy that, okay, that yeah. ran uh, the Sherlock series. Yeah, the Doctor Who guy. He did a three-part um, Dracula. Okay. And the first two are incredible. The third one is dumb. 
Hey, so you don't have to watch the third. It's one. a Stephen Moffat show, then, right? <laughs> yes. Doesn't he have a little bit of trouble with things going off the rails? Uh, I feel like mm-hmm. Sherlock went off the rails, and people Sherlock talk about absolutely went off the rails. Uh, His Doctor Who kind of went but off the rails. He makes some really fantastic episodes of yeah. television. Uh, the the first one, uh, it, it it it. First of all, it's it's interesting because it, I don't think Van Helsing is in it. At okay. All. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, it is such a beautiful, beautiful gothic horror because mm-hmm. uh, that first episode is just, you know, Jonathan Harker, whatever his name yeah. is. Uh, he shows up at uh, Dracula's castle and it's that part of the story. Right. And just the the visuals in it and the very specific gothic horror element of it. Mm -hmm. It's not splatter. It's not jump scare. It's not really Mm. psychological horror. It is just slowly watching him get sicker while Dracula gets gets healthier. It's so good. That's awesome. Um, Have you read Dracula? I have. Mm. Yeah. It's one of those books that I read when I didn't expect it to be that good. And then I'm like, why didn't I expect it to be this good? It's a classic. And it yeah, was really it's a classic well done. for a reason. Well, mm-hmm. and that leads me to the other thing I want to bring up. Have you read um, The Phantom of the Opera? The uh, actual book? I have not read the book, The Phantom of the Opera. There is a very Van Helsing esque character mm-hmm. in the book called The Persian. Oh, yeah. I, I do know, know about The Persian because I've seen a stage adaptation. And they actually, they actually included had the, him? had the Persian because, because it was he, not the... Yeah. He's the best part of the mm-hmm. story. Yeah. He is a an incredibly competent, intelligent, fascinating detective. Yes. Uh, and he is usually not in any adaptation of it. I know um, I've seen one adaptation with him in it that was deliberately not um, the, the... The kind of classic love yeah. story thing? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not the musical. Um, we really should get to this table, but... We need to talk about the table at some point. Um, I do want to point out, talking about musicals, mm-hmm. have you seen Hugh Jackman on stage ever? I have. Oh, yeah. Uh, I Well, okay. I didn't mm-hmm. see him like in person on stage, mm-hmm. uh, but I did uh, procure from some means mm-hmm. uh, a filmed version of his... Stage performance of Oklahoma. Uh huh. And Oklahoma, I've always thought of as this very, like, uh, yeah. you know, I boom chuck kind of musical that. Do it, not think highly of the musical Oklahoma. Yeah, it does not have mm-hmm. much uh, depth or weight to it of any kind. And, and the depth yet, or weight it has, it does not engage with. There's some disturbing exactly, aspects. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And yet, the Hugh Jackman version yeah. is stellar. Mm-hmm. It is so dark while also still being a very happy-go-lucky ah. uh, Rodgers and Hammerstein musical uh, that really gets into who these characters are. Like the the poor Judd is dead song yeah. is scary as crap instead of weirdly comedic, which is how most people stage right. it. Right. Um, I mean, that's that piece, when I saw it for the first time, ruined the whole play for me. I'm like, this is, this is something's real wrong here. Yeah. Uh, this this guy, he's mm-hmm. trying to talk the local bully and rapist into suicide. Yeah. And people always are like, ha ha, it's a funny song about a yeah. guy who wants to die. No, they mm-hmm. really took it seriously. Okay. And uh, it's it's wonderful. His mm. version of Oklahoma is so good. Yeah. And I didn't think any version of Oklahoma could be good. But Hugh Jackman has a way of elevating the material he is involved with. Adam, you have a... Yes, a uh, slight correction. Mm. The comic book that I'm aware of, or graphic novel, was based on the movie. Oh, so it's but backwards. But it came out in 2004, the same time as the okay. movie. So that's what I was familiar with. I thought one predated the other, hmm. but the movie was actually so first. Did you say they came out at the same time? Same year. Okay. But same year. It's obvious then that the comic is based on the movie. Okay. Part, yeah, part and, so, of a, and the yeah. character is based off deal. of Abraham Van Helsing from um, Bram Stoker's yeah. book. So that's yeah. the... So, actual so, origin. So, so I was wrong mm-hmm. on that. Okay. Well, we were kind of I knew of there right. was a graphic. Yeah. I uh, want someone yeah. to do a team up story mm-hmm. with Van Helsing, the crusty old detective, and the Persian crusty old detective who get together and have like a buddy cop comedy thing where they hunt mm-hmm. down creepy that sounds Victorian like monsters. League of Extraordinary Gentlemen type thing. It does. Which is a terrible movie. Yeah. Uh, no Hugh Jackman. It would have been so much better with Hugh Jackman yeah. in it. Yeah, that might that might have saved that movie. It might have. 
Uh, you'll notice I am wearing. Um, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have seen also Hugh Jackman on stage. I have seen Hugh Jackman on stage. So we went um, to New York Comic Con last year, I believe it we was. We did. Yes. In fact, one of your first uh, official appearances as a, as a member mm -hmm. of the company was us scooping you up and charting or carrying you off to New York to go record this podcast. I think live. that is my first mm -hmm. uh, public appearance. In capacity as VP of narrative. Yes. We had announced it in some places earlier, mm -hmm. but that was the first one after I had actually like started. You joined the company and then you were gone the next day yeah. with us or something it like that. It was very quick. Um, and instead of going seeing Hugh Jackman, you went and watched the League of Legends. Um, the League of Legends World yeah. Championships mm -hmm. uh, were in Manhattan at mm -hmm. the same time we were. And so I went and it was amazing. Now, we might be being a little cheeky at times in this episode, but I want to say this is not me being ironic or something. Hugh Jackman was great in Music Man. I don't doubt it. He yeah. was Harold Hill, I assume. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, which is... Like, legitimately fantastic. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of those old musicals, I love them because they are uh, a part of my childhood. I didn't mm -hmm. see Oklahoma when I was young, uh, and but Music Man, I did. Yeah. And so even though there's, you know... There are things that don't uh, that don't update well. Like the the plot of Music Man doesn't work as well as I remember it's, when I was a kid. It's a little skeezy these yeah. days. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, and it's not even the skeeziness of this one. This one's totally like there's just a little bit, but it doesn't, doesn't bother me. But the narrative doesn't really click together. Uh, like you know, it doesn't yeah, feel I, like you really. I don't know yeah. if I agree with that. Yeah. Um, of the kind of. Golden Age yeah. uh, musicals, Broadway musicals. Yeah. Um, Music Man is one I will fight for. Okay. Uh, first of all, whereas most of them are like Rodgers and Hart, Rodgers yeah. and Hammerstein, they're they're multiple people. Yeah. Uh, music Man is one dude, Meredith mm -hmm. Wilson, who did the book, he did the music, and he did the lyrics. He mm -hmm. did the whole thing all by himself. Uh, and also, it is far more experimental and musically complicated, then it gets credit for. I mean, the music is fantastic. Yeah. I'm just talking about the narrative. There's like, feels like a beat missing between him. Like, he gets off easy at the end. He does. Right? He gets off easy. He doesn't really have to, like, change who he is. He only has to be like, I'm actually in love now, so I should stay. There's just, it feels yeah. like there's one beat missing in there where he feels remorse for what he's done and tries to help the kids, stays and tries mm -hmm. to help the kids rather than stays and just like, well, I guess I'm going to jail, right? Yeah. Like there's one beat in there that, that I, I wish. Yeah. I think I will agree with that. Yeah. Uh, it does a good job of showing him slowly coming to the personal realization, I am a bad person. Yeah. I need to change. Mm -hmm. But you're right. We don't actually see that moment of him trying to fix the problems he's yes, created. Yes, exactly. Some little beat there. Like, I almost wish, like, his friend that's in the town were pushing him harder as a force against him in a way. that I, Anyway, neither here nor there, Hugh Jackman lit up the stage. This is, like, unironically, mm -hmm. just every time he was on stage acting— he exuded this sense of, I love being here. And everybody else seemed to light up a little bit. Now, I'll say that the uh, the lead who played Marion was fantastic also. Just, Do you remember who it was? Um, it's just, name's on here. Um, Sutton. 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 Sutton Foster. Just, She's fantastic. Just too. spectacular. I've loved her and everything I've seen her in. Um, and so, and they had really good chemistry. And I mean, that made the show. But you just, he steps on stage and everybody... Uh, perks up and mm -hmm. he is so excited and so happy to be there and you know that he doesn't have to go act in stage plays um he loves it he's got yeah. uh, a tony award too i believe um and oh yeah i need to be signing i should be signing oh man yeah that's uh, crazy well uh, we're, we're so excited we're so to talk, excited about, to talk the about the table we haven't even i i forget gotten to it yet yeah yeah, thanks for the reminder, Adam. I, yeah. That's why we do this podcast is so that I can sign pages. I um, cannot remember which of my books it was, but somebody did a fan cast joke mm -hmm. of 
a musical. And I want to say that it was an I Am Not a Serial Killer musical because that feels like the one somebody would do a jokey fan cast of. Mm -hmm. And they cast Sutton Foster in it. Okay. And I thought, you know, that's actually perfect casting. And I can't remember who that would have been. She's too old to play Brooke. Mm. Maybe she wasn't at the time. It's not like she's old. She's just an adult. Yes. But either way, um, Hugh Jackman actually started in stage and theater. Yeah. He was a theater actor and a singer when he got um, X-Men, which I don't think was his first. I think Kate and Leopold was his no, first. No, X-Men right? was before. X-Men but was his first one. On his IMDb credits, there are a couple of things that I don't recognize. They must be little Australian productions of something. Probably, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so he was kind of catapulted into stardom mm-hmm. uh, by X-Men. Yeah. Because he did a genuinely fantastic job. Uh, but Guinness Book of World Records? Record for the, I believe, longest person to play a comic book character. Longest run as a single comic book character, yes. huh? which would be X-Men was 2000 up until Logan was like 16, And 17? he's not done yet. Did, oh, because he's going to be in a Deadpool He's going to be movie, in Deadpool huh? 3. Somehow they're going to have him be in Deadpool 3 in a way that doesn't break the continuity and things like that. So well, I mean, said, Logan was set in the future. Yes. It's set in like 2029 or mm-hmm. something. So eh, that's fine. Yeah. That that doesn't break anything. So this table was not in any X-Men films. This table. This table no, was not. It was not. It was definitely not. But Hugh Jackman was in a lot of X-Men films. He was. Yes. Um, how many? He did the three base X-Men movies. Yes. And then he did... He did... First Class and Days of Future Past and Apocalypse, yes. which mm-hmm. were like the, the second trilogy. Yeah, of he X-Men only had movies. a cameo in the first, uh, but he is yeah. the best moment. He's in the that best movie. moment. In, first Class is a good movie. First Class is a uh, but he is the best moment in it. We should, we should rank these because First Class is both a great movie and a mediocre movie. Basically, <laughs> um, uh, they get Professor X and Magneto so right, and those actors just nail those characters that that part of the movie is brilliant yes and then the team they gather is like full of like the like that goofy Such kid that can yell b team well it, that's havoc i, I love havoc I as know, a character but he's so goofy on he's stage absolutely wasted also mm-hmm. do you know you know ramon right yeah ramon terrell mm-hmm. um i i remember talking to him uh, about first class after it had just come out he's yeah. another author uh, uh-huh. that we know really awesome writes yep. like urban fantasy and stuff yeah i am um, i Told people to go get his Kickstarter last year. Yes. He did a Kickstarter. Yeah, we've uh, got one of his yeah. books displayed mm-hmm. up here. Um, so he uh, he pointed out to me um, that there's one black dude in the movie. Mm-hmm. His power is that he can't be killed. Yeah. And somehow still he is the first one to die. Yep. Um, <laughs> yeah, it might have been Ramon. Uh, because the black dude's power is that he can adapt to any situation, right? I thought he was just like invulnerable. No, no. His thing is any situation, he evolves to that situation. Oh, okay. And his body naturally puts him like if he sticks his head in water, he grows gills. If mm. he gets attacked by a laser, he adapts, you know, so, so the laser doesn't hurt him. And the joke that went around is his body can adapt to any situation. So he's a black man in the 60s. That's what his body decides <laughs> that, Yeah. That's um, terrible. Yeah, it's I, that might have also been a Ramon joke. That sounds um, like a Ramon joke. Yeah, um, but regardless, uh, we should rank. Oh. oh, and I think just another slight correction: Patrick Stewart currently holds the longest record because he was in Doctor Strange, but Hugh Jackman will take it back. Oh, with uh, he will take it back. So he okay. lost it. Yes, and the Wikipedia has him been updated, and then Hugh Jackman's going to get it back with, if he if he appears. That's indeed. right. With the card. So. Yeah, yeah, Patrick Stewart was in Doctor Strange. Okay. Yes. Okay. There nice. we go. Good correction. That, that was well Taylor. done. Taylor, thank you, Taylor. So Taylor, well done. So what's uh, what's your ranking of X Men movies My by ranking tier? Ranking of X Men movies yeah. by tier. That, that we can be like A tier, and then let's just do like three tiers. Well, we got to start with S tier. Uh, no, okay, we if we just have three tiers, the, okay, top tier, top tier, mid tier, and then two, tier. I would agree you're with have, that. You're gonna have Days of Future Past, which is my favorite. You're gonna have Logan, Logan, okay. Um, yeah, I, I would. Don't know if I'd put any others in that in same that group. same tier. Um, so I'm tempted to put the first X Men in there because it was not not the first of the modern 
yeah. uh, superhero movies, but 100% it was the one that convinced Hollywood super. It's on that superhero border, movies right? were like Blade uh, predates it by a few yeah. years, mm-hmm. uh, but Blade did not kick off a gargantuan comic book yeah. renaissance in the way that X Men did. Let's just let's just put it at the top of the mid tier. Okay. Uh, so those three, where's your ranking of those three? Uh, those three within yeah. that tier. Yeah. Because Logan is the best movie, right? Would we agree on that of the three? I don't know. I mm-hmm. I, I think that X Men Two uh, takes it for me. Does it? Okay. Yeah. I X would... Men Two. I do love. Lo- I love Logan a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it is fantastic. Uh, I don't know which one I would put higher, Logan or Days of Future Past, because both of them are incredible. Days of Future Past took the incredibly broken timeline of the previous existing yep. movies, mm-hmm. uh, which included the original trilogy and First Class and I think uh, Wolverine Origins, right? I don't remember. And but, somehow made them I mean, it all took work. Those all, it, it retconned out X3? It didn't retcon it out. That's the thing. It accepted it and said, this is real, but also it doesn't count anymore. Yes. Like, it made them all fit together without discounting or deleting any of them. And I think as a feat of series writing, mm-hmm. it was extraordinary. I And I really enjoyed the movie. It's put together yeah. really well. It's a great so, movie. It's my favorite of the three, but I think Logan is the best made. Okay. That makes sense. So, but, all right. What's in our bottom tier? And then we can put all, everything else would be middle tier. The absolute bottom tier. Yes, bottom tier. So, um, which is Apocalypse? The, apocalypse, okay. I would um, agree. X Men 3. X Men 3 is my least favorite. Um, boy, I haven't even seen Dark Phoenix. I, so I'm I, not going to, I'm going to put the asterisk of that's the one I haven't seen. Yeah. Uh, so, with, so, does nobody does, liked it? But Wolverine Origins get to go in there, or does it get does it inch up into the the middle category? No, I think we have to put it at the bottom, yeah. even though it had several characters that I really liked. Like it did Deadpool dirty, and there's yes. no way around that. Um, I like, on the other hand, the way that they did Blob. Blob is one of yeah. my favorite uh, X Men characters. Okay, yeah. Um, I really liked uh, what's her name. Um, Deathstroke? No, she was in X Men Two. Oh, that's right. She's X Two. Uh, no, it was his uh, Wolverine's girlfriend. Uh, who's oh like yeah, Silver yeah. Fox or yeah. something. Uh, I liked her a lot. I mm-hmm. liked that actress in general. She was also in John Carter. Um, but uh, I, I, I think I might have to drop keep that one in the bottom tier rather than the middle tier. I would agree with you. It's just not a very good movie. I don't. I'm never excited to go like let's watch what X Men Wolverine Origins like X Men. <laughs> I'm just not going to be like yes. I I will spend my time on that middle tier. You could probably convince me to watch a lot of those movies again, uh, well, despite their flaws. And if if that's if that's how the decision is being yeah. made, I'm going to put uh, X Men Origins Wolverine in the middle tier. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to put uh, the Wolverine movie in Japan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bottom what tier. is that one? Because that one isn't bad so much as it is just boring. boring. It is yeah. so boring. What is the, even the name of that? Ah, uh, it's called Wolverine. Is it just X-Men Wolverine? It's just called Wolverine. Is, I think it's just called yeah, Wolverine. it's called Wolverine. Mm-hmm. Um, and it has like Silver Samurai and it has whatever. And mm-hmm. I don't know. You got to at some point address the Frank Miller run of Wolverine where he is yeah. a samurai. Uh, but it's it's not bad. It's just dull. Okay, and i i would I would watch uh, X Men Origins again before I would watch that one. I would agree with you on that. So yeah, so there we go. That's a that's a comprehensive look at. Uh, do you do you remember the time where Hugh Jackman um, went to Comic Con wearing a mask? Uh, no, did he do that? He went to Comic Con in San Diego with a mask on. Uh, and then later posted that he had been here and held up his mask. And I can't remember what kind of mask he was wearing. Uh, maybe you guys can look that I, up. I know that uh, Seth Green yeah. went to San Diego mm-hmm. Comic-Con in a Spider-Man costume. Yeah, I remember reading that one too. And and then he got recognized and he was like, the only thing worse than being recognized at Comic-Con is being recognized in a Spider-Man costume. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. um, he was trying to be incognito and it didn't work. I didn't know that uh, Hugh Jackman did it. That's hilarious. Yes. Uh, he probably has to wear more of a disguise than I do 
Uh, I was able to put on like a face mask and a hat and uh, and nobody recognized me. But Uh, have you seen the footage of Brian Cranston uh, wearing a mask? Yes. At Comic-Con? Yep. Wearing a Heisenberg mask. Yep. And nobody knew he was even at the show until he took it off. Mm Mm-hmm. Yep. Are you finding that story, or am I imagining it? Yep, that's it, correct. It, it did happen. Yeah. What what kind of costume was he wearing? Uh, it's, I think it said his full Wolverine costume. Okay. But... So he went in Wolverine costume. Yeah. As, and and it, so it, one like, with the mask. What's that? Pro- likely just one with the mask instead. Well, of... Maybe it was. Like, you would recognize. It just said his full costume. Yeah. So, huh. But if he's if he has like one of the fake maybe Hugh he went Jackman masks as Wolverine his face, as Wolverine. Yeah. With like a rubber Wolverine yeah. mask. Mm-hmm. I mean, just like Walter White did. Yeah. Or I should say Brian Cranston. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's funny. So I also like to imagine him just there without a mask, and everyone's like, "You look just like Hugh Jackman," and he's like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> that's that's my Australian mm-hmm. accent. I do get a lot. You look a lot like Brandon Sanderson, um, but it's almost always people saying that because they think it's me, but they don't. But they don't want to ask. Ask uh, okay. that way. If it's somebody who isn't me. It doesn't, you know. Uh, so people, that is that is one of the standard ways people uh, speak to me in public is, mm-hmm. you look a lot like, it's either that or they're like, you look familiar to me for some reason. Uh, I get that w- w- one. When I have seen it happen with you in public, it is often, I'm sorry to bother you, but mm-hmm. are you? Yeah, I get that one a lot too. Yeah. Which I certainly don't mind. Uh, the question I get all the mm-hmm. time is I will be, talking to someone and I they'll ask what I do for a living and I say well I write books and they'll say oh like science fiction fantasy books I guess cool I love fantasy have you ever read Brandon Sanderson <laughs> solid 90% of the conversations I have about my job you will get mentioned so well I uh, <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> it's it's worse for my brother because he looks a lot like me mm-hmm. and so people often uh, ask oh, do they mistake yeah. him for you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, there's a uh, there's a guy that moved into our neighborhood, lives behind uh, Jordan, mm-hmm. and um, I met him and introduced myself to him and said, and because he, he's from Nebraska, I'm like, oh, I was from Nebraska. He's like, yeah, you told me this yesterday, and I'm like, I, what? <laughs> uh, it was at church, right? And mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, like, no, I didn't. I didn't. Oh, he met Jordan. Yeah. It took me, it took me like a solid like hour. I'm like, how did I forget introducing myself and saying the exact thing? It was Jordo. Yeah. So, uh, dear listeners, if you ever see Brandon and he doesn't have glasses on, yep, it's and actually Jordan. Functional, uh, it's Jordan. Yes, you, the way you said that <laughs> implied that I'm not functional. Well, you can't see very well without your glasses. You didn't right? say you had a pause. <laughs> Without glasses and functional no. as two operators, not as in. Okay, as the, yeah. that's okay. Yeah, I there was enough yeah. of a pause there yes. for me to be like the two things that separate Jordo and Brandon. Yes, is that Jordo does not wear glasses and also he is a functioning human being. Yes, so just, just pointing out that uh <laughs> that that did sound uh that sounded interesting, um but uh you know what is functional? What this table? This table. It has supported us mm-hmm. through so many episodes. Yeah. It's a really nice table. Yeah. It 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 uh, I wish that we'd had more time to talk about it because yeah. I was looking forward this this table uh has, you know, mm-hmm. hundreds, thousands, literally tens of thousands of pages have been signed on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um the it supports these mics and supports these giant lights. It supports this brandless caffeine. Everyone always gets after me for like is Dan being paid off by the Coca-Cola Corporation? Do you know what else supports something? What? Hugh Jackman supported that movie, The Greatest Showman, and without him, it just would not have. He 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 upheld that movie he, quite well. He elevated it. Yes. As he does with all of his work. What do you think of The Greatest Showman? <sighs> Here's the thing. I don't really like The Greatest Showman. Ooh, uh, this is this is not that hot a take. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. Um I actually, so uh, the same people that did the music for Greatest Showman uh-huh. did uh, the new Christmas Carol movie with Ryan uh-huh. Reynolds and Will Ferrell. Did you watch that I one? I didn't, but I heard it was great. It's stellar. It's mm-hmm. so good. And I went into it kind of expecting it to suck because it was by the two people that did See, here's Greatest the Showman, great... which I don't think is very good. I think the music of Greatest Showman is excellent. <sighs> I don't. 
Man, that opening like song is such a showstopper. It is amazing. I I like the This Is Me song. Okay. And the woman who performs it, mm-hmm. uh, whose name I mm-hmm. don't re- recall. Uh, she's amazing in that, mm-hmm. and her song is incredible. There's actually a YouTube video mm-hmm. that you can look up, and maybe you've seen it because it's pretty famous. It is uh, someone was filming one of their rehearsals, mm-hmm. and it was the first time that the full cast ran through that song. Uh-huh. And you can watch her visibly supported and encouraged by Hugh Jackman kind of step up to the plate and have the confidence to sing mm-hmm. it. Like at the beginning of the song, she's very timid. And by the end of it, she's blowing the roof off the place. Uh, it's an incredible video that's just shot in a rehearsal room somewhere. I'm surprised that you don't like the music for that. Cause I think you like show tunes. I think the music that, that scene with the <sighs> cups in them and the bar is so good. Uh, the staging of the scene with the uh, with the the sheets uh, from now on is a real banger. I love that song. I I wanted to like it a lot more than I did. I find most of the songs to be very repetitive, mm. like never enough. Mm-hmm. A solid forty percent of the words in that song are never enough, just repeated over and over again. Uh, some of the early verses are wonderful, and mm-hmm. then they're like, "Well, we got two more minutes to fill. What do we do? Well, let's just have her sing never enough over and over again." Also, rewrite the stars, same thing. They just repeat the one line. They wrote a killer hook, and then they sing it five hundred okay. times. I can see that. I can. I can. Ex- yeah. I can understand that criticism. So. Um, I, I, am, I maybe should give it more of a chance than I gave it. Mm-hmm. It also just kind of bothers me on a very squicky level See, that here's the problem. Barnum is a horrible person yeah. and they didn't need to make this musical that doesn't even tell the true story of his life yep. about him. They could have done that exact thing with different names and it would have been less uncomfortable. That's the problem. That's that's the the serious problem with The Greatest Showman is it's hard to enjoy if you know anything about P.T. Barnum. Yeah. Um, and the the very legitimate criticism about it. I'm fond of the movie, by the way. I like the movie. I wish it were not about P.T. Barnum. Um, I think Hugh Jamin is great in it, and I legit love the soundtrack. But the other argument of this is about the circus freaks, uh, actually, they don't really get to be much in the show yeah. and have arcs. Is a, People have pointed that out. It's a pretty legit criticism. It is. Um, it's. It's. I mean, the the cast is very good. Rebecca mm-hmm. Ferguson is in it. Yep. Mm-hmm. Um, Zendaya is in it. She's wonderful. Um, yeah. It it, mm-hmm. it, it, it. it. I have the same criticism of that as like I call this first night syndrome. The movie okay. First Night is a good movie. It is not a good King Arthur movie. Right. They could have mm-hmm. told the exact yeah. same story with just different names. That's the Richard Gere one, right? would have automatically been better. Yeah. yeah. Richard Gere yeah. as Lancelot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like not Lancelot-esque in any sense, but they yep. just called him that because they're like, no one will come see our dumb night movie unless we pretend it's King Arthur. Yeah. And Greatest Showman is the same thing for me. I like what Greatest Showman did also, kind of for uh, just like, hey, let's just do an old-fashioned musical. Mm-hmm. as a movie musical and really works. I really thought we were going to see more of those. Yeah. Now, Chicago came out, won like a zillion awards, yep. made a ton of money, and I thought, mm-hmm. oh, we're about to witness the rebirth of the Hollywood musical, and then we didn't. Yeah. And maybe that's because that was about the same time that they went all in on superheroes, so maybe that's what took the, mm. the Do you attention. Know? A uh, story um, with rebirth in it, Les Miserables, in which Jean Valjean is reborn as a yeah. new person with a new name um, after uh, meeting the the good the good friar. I don't think he's a friar. The good priest. He was a bishop. Bishop. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, movie with rebirth. I mean, we do need to get to the table, but. Les Mis. Did you see the Hugh Jackman Les Mis? Yeah, we actually talked uh, extensively about yes. the Hugh Jackman oh, Les Mis right. when we did Cats. Yeah. Uh, because that's another one yeah. that I think is mm-hmm. really well cast and really poorly staged and filmed. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't love it. Um, I don't either. And I love Les Mis. So yeah. there's, uh, that's all we I really mean, need Hugh to Jackman's say. I mean, Hugh Jackman's wonderful in it. He is. And Hathaway's wonderful yeah. in it. Uh, he... Russell Crowe is not wonderful in it. <laughs> Russell Crowe is wonderful <laughs> He is a good Javert. He's, he's a, a good, good Javert. casting for Javert. Anytime he's, he's not singing. He is poorly directed in the singing department. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do not blame him 
at all, knowing what happened. But um, yes, but yes, um, but but before we get to the table, mm-hmm. do you have a favorite Hugh Jackman movie? A favorite Hugh Jackman movie? Yes. What is your absolute favorite? Because we had not oh, have man. have not yet mentioned my favorite Hugh Jackman movie. Your favorite Hugh Jackman movie? Yes. Um, knowing what I know about you, yes. I have my suspicions of what mm. your favorite Hugh Jackman movie is going to be. Well, there's also not a lot of them that we haven't mentioned yet. Yeah, we've we've talked about all the Wolverine ones. Yes. I mean, there's um, a few Hugh Jackman movies I haven't seen, so. Boy, that's a hard one. I think my favorite... I, I said that X-Men 2 was the mm. best of the X-Men movies. Yes. My favorite Hugh Jackman movie is probably Logan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I can totally accept that. My favorite Hugh Jackman movie is Real Steel. That's what I thought you were mm-hmm. going to say. So, um, um, Sean Levy movie. Mm-hmm. Um, he does a good job with his films. He's been involved in a lot of things. He did the Night at the Museum films, but also he's done a bunch of Stranger Things and yeah. uh, and other. He's been doing a lot of television lately. And Real Steel is this Richard Matheson story, I believe. You guys may want to fact check me on that. Uh, he did uh, Richard Matheson's famous he, for he's, um, I Am Legend. I Am Legend. Yeah. Um, and I'm fond of the story. Uh, and Real Steel is a really cool adaptation of that story into a film, um, and it's it's really good. Yeah. It's just really, really good. I I, I definitely wouldn't put it as my favorite mm-hmm. um, Hugh Jackman movie. Mm-hmm. Um, I do like it a lot, though. For some reason in my head, uh, maybe it's because they came out at similar times. Yeah. I had kind of conflated Real Steel and Alita Battle Angel. And oh. I don't think that that makes They didn't any, even come out at the same time. They didn't even come yeah. out at the same time, yeah. right? They were years apart. Yes. And they were both about like, here's, I don't know, movies that have fighting robots in their trailers is probably the only connection between them. Uh, I do not like Alita Battle Angel at all. Okay. I don't Ooh. think it worked. Okay. Okay. I can see that argument. I'm, yeah. I'm, I respect Alita Battle Angel. It's Robert <laughs> Rodriguez, I believe. It is. Um, and, and it's the only movie of his that I didn't like. Weird stuff. And But speaking of real steel, some things I really like about this okay, movie. Okay, tell us. One is that the robot never is sentient. It's not actual, like, you mm-hmm. know, like... You expect this movie. It's it's basically it's it's following the same plot that I used a little bit in Skyward. Mm-hmm. Kid finds a broken down robot that it's in a world where you have boxing robots. You box with your robots, yeah. right? And you train your robot and it goes to boxes, but it's not alive. It isn't even sapient. It's not even sentient. Mm-hmm. It is just a program thing, just a tool. But they use it in a way that's um uh oh. Alan tells this story from Writing Group. Yeah. Um, I love this story. It's, uh, when he was watching Castaway, the movie with, um, with Tom, Tom Hanks, Hanks, he says, for the first time in that movie, I can believe how people started worshiping idols. Because there's that mm. moment where Tom Hanks is building a fire and he looks to Wilson, back to the fire, and then looks to Wilson and looks to the fire. And he starts the fire and there's this like this personification that happens of the volleyball that mm-hmm. makes you cinematically and narratively think it might be watching him. And the yeah. real steel does this with the robot without ever making the robot alive. Yeah. And I love how they frame that and use that as this kind of story between a, uh, a father and a son. I like father son narratives as a guy with three sons. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like the climax. It's a very Brandon style climax where kind of a person comes into their own and goes back to kind of the, the person, you know, takes the person they used to be and takes the best parts out of them that they have lost and brings it back to themselves and and kind of stands up again and becomes that person that they 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 know they could be again. Yeah. Um and just uh that move that that ending uh, I actually watched it on a flight um to Japan. Mm. Um so yeah, anyway. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Uh so Roger Ebert, famous yes. movie critic. Mm-hmm. Uh he talks a lot about what he calls elevation, uh-huh. uh, that that is an emotion where you, it is the the emotion you feel when you watch somebody do something good-hearted and selfless. Right. And that is one of my favorite things to see in movies. It's one of my favorite things to put into my books. Mm-hmm. 
this uh, sense of, oh, I didn't think this person was going to be that good. Mm-hmm. And they've just done something really and truly good. And I love that. Hugh Jackman is good at that. He is. All right. Uh, I think we should stop. But the table. 